today. What the Lord's having me do this morning is a little bit of recap on the last couple messages, because what he's wanting to take place within our lives, and what he's wanting to accomplish within our lives is actually that first phrase there, being rooted and grounded. Now, in the greatest commandment, or the greatest commandment, that's the title of this one, and of course it's been rooted and grounded and we've talked about the cornerstone. We've rooted and grounded. And we've talked about the vine. But it's basically the Lord wants us to be rooted and grounded in Him. And when we're talking about being rooted and grounded in Him, it's not just that place to where, uh, that where I just come to church and I just read my word and I just do the things I'm supposed to do. But it's where we fall in love with our Lord Jesus Christ where we begin to have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And our lives begin to change because of His presence in and about our lives. That when we do read the Word, we're looking at the Word trying to receive a Word from Him. When we do pray, we're praying not just to give Him our list, but we're praying to hear from Him. When we're spending time, we're spending time with Him. To where every step that we take in our work and the things we do in our life, our play, the thing, anything that we do throughout our lives, where anything we do becomes about Him. A couple weeks ago, we talked about the cornerstone, and I'm going to just read through some of these scriptures here. So now, when you Gentiles are no longer strangers and foreigners, Your citizens, along with all God's holy people, you're members of God's family. Together, we are His house, built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, and the cornerstone is Jesus Christ Himself. We are carefully joined together in Him, becoming a holy temple for the Lord. Through Him... You Gentiles are also being made part of His dwelling where God lives by His Spirit. That was two weeks ago, and I won't preach that message again. Last week, we go to the vine, to where it says, I am the grapevine, and my Father is the gardener. Listen closely. In John 15, 2, it says, He cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit. And he prunes the branches that do bear fruit, so they will produce even more. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is is severed from the vine. And you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. Rooted and grounded is making him our cornerstone. Not only the cornerstone of this church body, but the cornerstone of our life. He gives direction to our life. He gives stability to our lives. But then he brings us last week to where we need to stay connected to him. When we start disconnecting from him, then we begin to die. And if we go too far... Well, I'll let the scripture answer that for you in John 15. But it says, I'm sorry, remain in me and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine. And you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. Yes, I am the vine and you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Now the reason the Lord brought us to this vine in His Word is because we need to understand we must stay connected to Him. But when we do stay connected to Him, we will begin to fulfill what He has for our lives. Because as we stay connected to His bloodline or to His will and to His ways, the things in and about our life begin to change. And then without us even trying, people around us begin to be affected 
by what's going on in and about our lives. Yes, there's times the Lord will speak to us to speak to others and to give life to others and give direction to other people. There will be those times, but there's other times to where we're just living our life full on and they're watching us and they will see something they need and they will come to us and say, hey, I know you love the Lord. Would you help me pray about this? And it begins to bring opportunity in your life to share your testimonies and to share the things God has done for you in your walk and in your journey and in your life. And what he's talking about in fruitfulness is he's talking about others knowing him and having a relationship with him. So our lives can be lives as we're connected to Him and more we draw to Him. Our lives begin to influence and impact the people who are around us. Because we're not just church Christians, but we're God's family. We're children of God. We're connected to God. We're in tune with Him. Even when we're in the midst of maybe a job that's greasy and dirty. And we find ourselves frustrated. We can go to God. And he's there. And he wants to give direction to us even there. Because how we react. The things that we do in and around our lives. Affect the people that we're in and around. When you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. Remember what God's doing within the church. God's developing the church to where the church, and you know what the church is, it's not this building, but it's you, to where the church is his disciples. Kind of like in the New Testament. What took place there in the New Testament? To where when they got a hold of the Lord, they begin to point to Christ and point to His goodness and point to what He could do. They begin to become and be His disciples. Because what we're required to go is to go make disciples. Every one of us. So when you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. This brings great joy to my Father. I have loved you even as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love. When you obey my commandments, you remain in my love. I have to read that one again. When you obey my commandments. He's speaking about his commandments. What he speaks into our life. The things he makes real into our heart and our mind. Those things. When you obey my commandments, you remain in my love. Just as I obeyed the Father's commandments and remain in His love. I've told you these things so that you will be filled with my joy. As I've watched different children of God go through different difficult times in their lives, there's an underlining joy and peace that takes place Whenever we're assured by Christ and His Spirit. Yes, your joy will overflow. This is my commandment, and this is where we're going to start today. So this has all been the introduction. Y'all ready? Got your seatbelts on? This is my commandment. Love each other in the same way I have loved you. You. Now let's ponder that just for a minute. I read that scripture at the very last of last week's service. And I mentioned to everyone who was able to be here last week, I mentioned to you that if you don't read anything else this week, if you don't feel like you have time to just really get in your word, I said, take this one scripture and meditate on it. And the reason I feel like that we need to meditate on it and think about this scripture is let me read it to you one more time and then I'll explain. This is my commandment, love each other in the same way I have loved you. Let's think about it just for a minute. What has Christ done for you? Did he forgive you whenever you did not deserve being forgave? 
Has He forgiven you during times that really you deserve different than forgiveness? And the reason I say that is because sometimes we feel like we can't forgive because they don't deserve our forgiveness. Pastor, you do not know what they've done to me. It may be true, I may not know what they've done to you. But they crucified Christ. They spit upon him. And I'll tell you what, that would have been harder for me than actual crucifixion was being spit on. I don't know why that bothers me so bad. Maybe I'm an old western type guy, I don't know. You spit on somebody in the western, they want to shoot you. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. But, but anyway, what I'm saying is they crucified him. They spit on him. They tortured him and beat him. And as he's laying, or not laying, but as he's hanging there on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them. Father, forgive you. When he was saying that, he was saying, Father, forgive This church, the people who are here, forgive them. That's the love that Jesus Christ showed us. So whenever we get to that place of road rage, we need God's presence to come in on our lives and say, Lord, forgive them for pulling in front of me and about causing an accident. (laughs) It gets really quiet when I talk about things like this. This That's why I had you smile beforehand, okay? This is why we had to laugh a little bit before. But it's those times to, there's times to where he, man, our flesh interferes with this process. Our flesh interrupts this process, right? But he's asking us and commanding us, love them like I love you. This brings us to today. So now we're going to preach the message. The other wasn't preaching yet. One of them, an expert of the religious law, tried to trap him with this question. Now what was happening is they was trying to trap Jesus when they was asking this question. They said, teacher, which is the most important commandment in the law of Moses? And Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul, and with all your mind. To be rooted and grounded in our Heavenly Father. This is the first and the greatest commandment that we must be aware of and we must receive into our lives. It says you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. Now it could be the heart and soul and mind could describe the centers of emotion, action, and thought. The point of the command is not set to separate them. When he's naming them out, it's not to separate them, but it's to join them together with every aspect of a person fully committed to loving God. I need to read that again. The point of the command is not to separate these three, but to join them together in every aspect of a person fully committed to loving God. We love Him with our soul, our heart, and with our mind. Every aspect of our life is contributing to love towards our Lord God. Every area, our whole, our entirety... And to love the Lord God with all of our heart, I don't know how we can do it without selling out to Him. Without making Him our all in all. A pure, interrupted, uninterrupted commitment to God and His will is the very basis of a proper relationship with Him. Here I am, use me. Here I am, use me. 
The reason I believe the Lord's bringing us to these scriptures once again, and they're such basic scriptures. There's things that we heard all of our life. In fact, if I'd ask you what's the greatest commandment, you'd have probably told me. But the reason the Lord's bringing us back to these scriptures is our lives, it's one thing to know it, it's one thing to know about it. It's one thing to have that information and that education. But it's a whole other thing for that to begin to radiate out of our lives. That if somebody looks at us, they can say they love the Lord with all their heart. If somebody sees what we do and how we live, they can say they love the Lord with all their heart. They may be a little crazy, but they love the Lord with all their heart. I know you're talking about me that way. I, I know. It's okay. I am. It's all right. But a pure, uninterrupted commitment to God and His will is the basis, the very basis of a proper relationship with Him. This is the first and the greatest command. But listen, He doesn't stop there. As He's speaking to this man and He asks, what's the greatest commandment? Jesus did not stop with, just love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. But the second is equally important. And it says, love your neighbor as yourself. Well, who's my neighbor? (laughs) It's anybody. We have neighbors in Africa, in India, all over the world are our neighbors. They may not be our next door neighbor, but they're our neighbor. What about those people who are trying to do harm to us? What about the people we feel like is trying to do harm to us? Yeah, I've seen some heavy breathing when I said that. I've seen that the deep swallows and the heavy breath because you know what? Sometimes if we're not really careful, we begin to become prejudiced and we begin to be- get this part of our lives to where Christ's love wavers in us towards certain people. The second is equally as important. Love your neighbor as yourself. Both commands focus solely on what a person does with his or her affection Attention and actions. Affection, attention, and actions. Treating other people as we would want to be treated is what is meant to love others as we love ourselves. He says in verse 40 of Matthew 22, the entire law and The entire law and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. As a child of God, if we can get these two commandments solidified in our hearts and our minds, everything else begins to fall in place. Just two. Everything else begins to fall into place because it holds everything else together. That's what the Word says. That I love God with everything within me and I love others as myself. But yet we read earlier that we're also to love them as Christ loved them. When we think of those people that are unlovable or we just really don't even like. You know you can not like somebody and still love them. Anyway, we won't go there today. In other words, you don't like how they act or what they do, and you don't think it's the best thing to do to hang out, you know what I'm saying? But you can still have a love for them and a desire for them to know Jesus Christ. You don't want to take them out to the woodshed or anywhere else. The entire law and the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. God's greatest desire for any human being is that he or she Love God and love others. Everything else we ever think about God, everything else we ever think about God, everything else that we ever believe about God, everything else that we say about God, or everything else that we 
do for God must be motivated by the core impulse of a love for Him and a love for others. Ultimately, all the rules and directives and the law flow from the ideas of loving God and loving others. So it brings us back to a scripture in John chapter 15, verse 12. This is my command. Love each other the same way I have loved you. I need the worship team, please. Now it's time for us to make a decision. Because as I've been talking and sharing these scriptures and these thoughts, without raising your hand, and I don't want you to raise your hand, but how many of you, someone came to your mind, or maybe even a nationality came to your mind, or maybe even someone who's running in a political office came to your mind, That you just wouldn't care if they dropped dead. Or you just wouldn't care if they was hurt. Or you just don't care about them. You just don't have any care about them at all. When we're rooted and grounded in our Heavenly Father. He wants to change that. By inserting His love in our heart and our life. You see, in our flesh, it's impossible. It's really impossible in our flesh. But He wants to place His love within us and change our thoughts and change our desires and change the way we look at people. You see, when I walk through the mall, I look at them differently than what I used to look at them. Partly because the mall is more empty than it used to be. But I look differently because... I look at him now and where I might have been judgmental toward that person I seen in the mall, now I'm thinking, Lord, you love that person. You love them. Even when they're being a knucklehead or a knothead, you love them. Just like you love me whenever I'm being a knothead or when I'm doing things wrong, you still love me. When I make mistakes, you still love me. Whenever I accidentally pull out in front of somebody, you still love me. That was supposed to be funny. God's wanting to change the very insides of us. He's wanting us to be rooted and grounded in Him to where we don't live like we used to live. That we are not the same person we used to be. That we look at people and life differently. The only way we can do that is to go back to last week's message and know we must stay connected to Him. We must stay connected to Him. Would you stand with me? said just a minute ago, this is a time for us to make a decision. It's a time for us to say, yes, I want all you have for me, Lord. And yes, I'm willing to allow you to change my heart and my life. Yes, Lord, I do want to live the life you want me to do live as a, with a love for you and a love for others. Or we can say, no, nah, I'm not going to love that person. We have that choice. We can continue to allow the bitterness to settle in our lives to where we become cranky, bitter people. I'm just being real here, just speaking truth. Or we can allow God's presence to overwhelm us. 
that we offer such forgiveness that there's joy radiating out of our lives because we're not holding on to any grudges or bitterness or hatred towards anybody. But we're filled with His love and we can smile and enjoy life because we're not carrying anything around because we've given and forgiven. There's also another choice to be made this morning. And that is that choice. Are we willing to strive, to dig in, to to try to become closer to the Lord than we've ever been in our lives? And it's not by what we do or how we do it, but it's about a hunger in our lives, a hunger in our hearts that we strive to be what God wants. God, I need you. God, I want you. God, I desire you that begins to come out of our hearts and our lives to where we want the fullness of what He has for us. Or we have the choice to say, no, I'm good. What's your choice today? What's your desire today? Today, the altar time is going to be a little bit different in the aspect of if you feel God drawing you for anything I've mentioned or for anything else because you're just drawn. You feel like you need to bow before Him or you need to come to this front and say, God, I need you and you want the church to pray with you. If that's you this morning, it's open. Come on now. Come on now if you want to. I'm not going to make anybody, but I'd love to pray with you. I'd love for a church to pray with you. If you're feeling drawn, if you're not, that's okay.